Here's another problem from written assignment number four that I wanted to um, discuss. So part A, well in, in each part of this, let's say this first, W is a subset of the collection of all polynomials degree two or lower, so that's P2. Um, now one thing about that, uh, so we already know that P2 is closed under um, addition and scalar multiplication. Um, so if we take two elements of P2 and add them together, you get another, if you take um, two polynomials, degree two or less, and add them together, you get another polynomial degree two or lower. Um, you don't really need to investigate that in this problem. So what's, what's critical is that you take into account this added condition. So this is what makes W uh, a subset. We're not talking about all of P2. We're talking specifically about the polynomials degree two or lower uh, in part A, where the derivative of the polynomial at two is equal to zero. Um, now, whenever we're talking about a collection of functions, then what's considered the zero vector for a collection of functions is just the constant function f of x equals zero. And this does qualify as a polynomial um, with degree zero. So it's degree less than um, or equal to two. And so uh, this constant function is uh, an element of P2. Further, if you take the derivative of that function, f of x equals zero, the derivative is zero everywhere, including um, at two. So that means that the zero vector um, for this space is contained in W. So the zero vector, which is equal to the, um, that constant function f of x equals zero does belong in W. So that's a check on that first condition. Next, you would want to show that W is closed under addition. I'll just swallow that down right here. Uh, so to verify that, you need to take any two generic elements of W. So let's say uh, that P and Q are both elements of W. Then next, we should write down what we know then about P and Q. So specifically, if they belong in W, then the derivative of P at, at two and the derivative of Q at two should both equal zero. Now, if we add those two polynomials, P plus Q, and take the derivative at two, well, there's a property of differentiation that says uh, when you have a sum of two functions, you can just take the derivative one part at a time here. Since P belongs in W, we know that this derivative is zero. Since Q belongs in W, we know that this derivative is zero. So the sum is zero, which proves that P plus Q belongs in W. And so W is closed under addition. We take any two elements of W, add them together, uh, you get another polynomial that belongs in W. Um, is it closed under scalar multiplication? So again, make sure you're using just a generic element of the set. You can't pick one specific polynomial. You have to show that if you pick just any polynomial uh, in W and any number C, C is an element of, of R, uh, then is C times P in W? That's the question. Um, let me make a, a quick note. So what we know about P since it belongs in W is that its derivative at two is equal to zero. So now we look at C times P. And remember, so the, the um, characteristic that qualifies C times P to belong to W is if its derivative at two is equal to zero. So again, you could use a property of differentiation that says when you have a scalar times a function, you can just let that scalar sit out front and look at just the derivative of uh, P, which we know is zero because P belongs in W. So it doesn't matter what this scalar is C, 
we're multiplying by zero, so this product is going to be zero, which means that um, C times P does belong in W, which means that yes, it's closed under scalar multiplication. Um, and so in part A, uh, W is a subspace of P2. Now part B, if we required that the derivative at 2 is 1 instead of 0, all three of these conditions are going to fail. Um, but to show that something is not a subspace, you can just pick any one of these and show that it fails. Since the requirement for um, W to be a subspace by that, that theorem, that shortcut theorem, says if you can prove that just all three of these um, properties hold for the subset, then it is a uh, subspace. All three of those properties have to hold. So if any of them fail, it's not a subspace. So it's sufficient to say, um, well, in this case, so again, the zero vector would be the constant function f of x equals zero. The derivative of that function everywhere is zero. So specifically at two, yes, the derivative is going to be zero, not one. So the zero vector is not contained in w. Uh, well, then it's not a subspace. And you could stop there. Not a subspace. Um, I did want to point out just it, it also fails closure under addition. If you take any two elements of w, then that means that the derivative of each of these guys is 1. Oops, I wanted this to be q. q prime at 2 would also be 1. Well, then if you take p plus q, take the derivative at 2, you're going to have 1 plus 1 this time, where we had 0 plus 0 before, so that was 0, everything worked out fine. Now it's 1 plus 1, so you get 2. Oops, let me write over there, equals 2. Um, so p plus q does not belong in w. And also, if you do c times p, take the derivative at 2, you're going to have c times 1, so you're going to get this scalar c, where c can be any number. It certainly doesn't have to be 1. Um, and so it's not closed under scalar multiplication either. But again, I mean, to, to ha give a complete answer to b, you really just need to prove any one of these, and you can stop. To show that something is a subspace, you have to show that all three uh, properties hold.